Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Maladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, I'm gonna be a match between Serral and Zest from Home Story Cup that wrapped up just a few weeks ago now. It's gonna be a ZVP here on Dathara, a good map for macro games. Top left, we have the Finnish Blue Zerg player, Serral. And the bottom right, the Korean Red Protoss player, Zest. Alright, so Zest can either be super aggressive or play excellent late game. Very dangerous Protoss opponent here for Serral and uh, Serral's world champion, so um, you pretty much know how good he is already. So Serral <laughs> lining up his drone to get to the third base when he reaches 300 minerals. The timing works out. <laughs> uh, just expecting the pro block. That's the life of Zerg right now. <laughs> so hit the like button if you're interested and excited for Serral vs. Zest. Uh, you already clicked on this, so I know you're interested. So again, hitting that like button just helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm recommending me to other StarCraft fans. And yeah, also the Falcon Paladin Hour is a weekly podcast featuring myself and Somicron and Aussie streamed live at twitch.tv slash Somicron, S-O-M-I-C-R-O-N, every week, every Tuesday. At about, uh, let's say, 9 p.m. Eastern, U.S., shall we? So be sure to check that out. You can also search the Falcon Paladin Hour on your podcast app, and you'll find us there as well. Or just search Falcon Paladin. You don't have to type hour necessarily, but... And while I'm at it, the Falcon Paladin store. Falconpaladin.store is a place you can go to get mugs and hats and hoodies. If it's getting colder for you this time of year, which it is if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere people are like, what? It's getting so hot right now. Yes, it is. It's getting very warm right now, but... You don't live in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a different entire world down there, I promise. A different world you would not understand if you were to go. Yeah, that's probably not true. That's not fair to say, but... <laughs> Whatever. Falconpaladin.store. Easy to remember for your merch needs. So, Zest, not doing anything crazy. One gate expands. Cybercore up. Probably a Stargate, be my guess. Hey! We guessed accurately. Not hard to do. Serral getting a handful of lings out. Probably third base timing. You know, in about 10 seconds or so, once he has that 300 minerals, would be my uh, assumption on that one. It is very weird to take your third base here and then not take your natural at all. Although I suppose a two base attack here would be moderately possible, but yeah, there we go. 242, three. Throwing up that hatch in the natural base. All right, so Serral has a couple options here. If Sess is gonna go sky toss on him, Serral can try to kill him fast, right? You make a ton of queens, roaches, ravagers, Maybe a Nidus Worm at the front, or slow push your queens across the map. And try to kill Zest before he gets up to 6 to 8 to 9 carriers, which is when he gets really annoying to deal with. The other option is try to out macro him. Try to get up some Vipers, try to do some Abducts on those carriers, bring him into a Hydra Ball or a Corruptor Ball, get some Neural Parasite rolling, and try to win a battle of the Spellcasters, which can be a little difficult, because again, a good Protoss will have Storm available, will have Archons in there. Gonna probably have some disruptors and some immortals, just everything in the world. Yeah, I love the Voidray opening. I just do. You can kill the Scouting Overlord, which forces Serral to rebuild it, which sucks for him and his economy. And you can deal with any early Roach attacks really well, too. You can defend your third base pretty effectively against anything except for maybe like 30 to 40 Zerglings, which is a way too big of an investment for the Zerg player to do. So honestly, I don't know why most Protoss don't open Void Ray. It's just, it's really good, it's fast is the thing. When it was slow, it really couldn't respond to threats very well, but now that it's fast with good acceleration, even without the Flux Veins upgrade, it's just a good unit. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's just, it's good. It's a good unit. Believe me, trust the Falcon. Ah, you've watched StarCraft. You know what's up here. So, Oracle, hmm. I mean, do we give the Oracle a name? She's alive, and she's got two kills, so sure. Mistaken Void Ray Pilot. In the new meta, I mean, Protoss Tactical Philosophy, Void Rays are always built and sent out first when fighting Zerg. Hey, one Void Ray Pilot was so sure of this that he raced to get into the first vehicle sent off into battle, not noticing that the ship was a ball. Now he is very confused why he can't shoot up and why his lasers keep running out of fuel. It's pretty good. I like that. Four kills her on this Oracle, not too shabby. The Void Ray makes it home to get more kills, already up to four total. The harassment's been pretty effective thus far. 
And mistaken Void Ray Pilot is hanging out in this corner. Might get recalled home, might move in for another attack. Another Void Ray coming in. Ooh. This is getting dicey. This might be one of those Void Ray Zealot attacks that can be so effective against Zerg. Because you really kind of force the Zerg to get a Hydralisk Den to deal with a lot of Void Rays. But then if you have Charge Lots, the Charge Lots eat the Hydras for breakfast. Or lunch or dinner, depending on what time of day it is here. It's always daytime, I guess, on this map, so... Uh, new lunch. We'll say it's lunch time. Lunch time. Revelation gets tossed down by Mistaken Void Ray Pilot. I don't know. MVRP? MVP for short? Mistaken Void Ray Pilot? <laughs> I don't call him the MVP, but... Yeah, now this is really nice from Zest. Able to get this low base established, and now taking this is even easier because he just has to recover this ramp. And I guess this ramp, but that's that goes without saying. So yeah, the response to this from Serral, I really feel like kind of has to be a Hydralisk Den. I guess if you have enough queens, you can probably pull this off, but look, charge is coming in. Temple Archives on the way, plus one attack here too. There's the Hydralisk Den. Okay, so yeah, Serral decides Hydras are the answer. But the charge lots are a good answer to set hydras. The paper, rock, scissors game is uh, running fast and well here. Boom. Yeah, see, there we go. Pretty easy fourth base here from Zess. He's not even worried about it, right? He's got overlords patrolling. There's lings trying to shark around in here and see what's going on, but. Voidaries don't kill them fast, but it's fast enough that they can't really sit around and try to kill Protoss buildings. They're too chunky. They have too much HP for the Lings to get through those shields and get through that uh, that hole, whatever it is, the actual body of the thing. But Cyril, despite the early drone losses, is up to, gosh dang, 82 workers? Criminy Crikeny. Oh, I think our Oracle died. Mistaken Voidray Pilot. No. Ah, Mistaken Voidray Pilot is dead. Rip fairly well. So it's going to be a, like, tiny little zealot, mostly Archon Voidray attack here, which isn't really intended to push in there, I don't think. Oh, yes. Banelings are also good versus zealots on this kind of a style of a thing, too. So five zealots on the way. Making sure the creep spread is at least pushed back and delayed. You're never going to... Totally shut down the creep spread for Serral, or Rainer, or Dark, or Rogue, or Scarlet, right? Any of these elite Zerg players, it's just not happening. But you can slow it down, right? That's all you can really do. Infestation Pit on the way. Got a Warp Prism down here from Zest. Gonna maybe warp in some of them charge lots into Serral's base. Which I think may be the most universally despised thing in StarCraft 2, right? Protoss hate it when it happens to them. Zerg hates it when it happens to them. Terran hates it when it happens to them. I guess maybe being cannon rushed, maybe. But Terrans don't really hate being cannon rushed. They're fine with it. I think it's. I think it's got to be this having a bunch of charge slots warped into your main base. They're hard to dislodge. Sometimes they get a lot of damage done before you kill them. They show up out of nowhere. They instantly warp in. Super annoying to deal with. Anyway, Cyril's taking our fifth base at the twelve o'clock position. He was down in economy pretty heavily, but now he's doing fine. Also, get out of there, Overseer. Can't run fast enough. Void Rays are too gosh darn zippy. So, Lingbane Hydra. In answer to the Void Ray Zealot comps we're seeing here, but also we have a lot of High Templar and a Fleet Beacons coming in. And I think Zest might just sit back on four bases generally and try to defend until he gets a big old carrier fleet up. Never mind, he's going to expand. He's not really defending this side very well, although there's some High Temple already to rock. Do they have energy for Storm? Yes, they just barely do. I don't know if we want to bother with Storm here, because the cannons are covering the outside of those warp gates pretty effectively. If there were Hydras in the mix, that'd be different. Where are the Hydralisks? They're over here, I see. Hmm, yes. Zealot, scouting purposes. I feel like you could jump on this and kill it, probably, but... Yeah, actually, he could. Look at this. Earl's maxed out. He could absolutely... He's going to do it. Yeah, he's like, what do we see here exactly? Uh, a couple storms available. Oh, the splits are pretty fantastic here. Oh, he feels like he's got it. Right? The Hydras, enough of them are alive. The Void Rays are all dead. And then the Archons die. Oh, but enough charge outs are remaining. I thought those guys got wiped out by the Banelings. Nope. And now, look, the Hydras have to get on out. Frustrating. Frustrating situation there for Serral for sure. I thought we got some connections, but nope. 
42 links in production, Ultra List Cavern on the way, Spire coming in here too, Carrier production has begun from Zest as predicted through most of this game that we were going to go to the Carriers. And this is where it gets hard for the Zerg player. It is hard to play for the Protoss too. I'm not saying they just have to aim move. All they gotta do is just aim move across the map and they win. That's stupid. That's not how it works. Right? You have to have carriers. You have to have your Archons and your Void Rays and your Immortals and your Zealots and your High Templar. And you have to control them all perfectly. And if you screw up, you're going to lose. But if you play it well, you engage properly, then you're really, really hard to deal with. But I just don't think that your average Platinum or Diamond level player can really do this. What Zest is doing, right? Right. I don't think so. So I'm not saying it's overpowered. It's hard to control. It's hard to pull off. And it's hard for Zerg to deal with, which I think it's fine. I mean, uh, so Raynor did win the World Championship for 2020, right? But he did it by not engaging with Skytoss. He did it entirely in his final series against... Was it against Trap? Where he literally went for super, super aggressive three base Queen Roach Ravager timings and tried to kill the Protoss before they could get up to this point. And it worked more often than it didn't, and he's a world champion now. So I really hate to say that the best way to handle this strategy that Zest is doing is not let them get there because I hate that answer. Oh, trap! Oh, it was a, it was a trap the whole time! Oh, he baited those into the Banelings. That was gorgeous. That was absolutely beautiful. Get in the front door. Arr, no? All right. So let's chase. Oh, let's, arr, Zerglings back out of there. Yep. So like I said about Dathora, a good map for the macro games. Got some Ultralisks coming in to try to deal with the High Templar on the ground and their Archons and stuff. But see, that's why you have a couple of mortals in the mix to hammer on the, the Ultras. And again, a lot of this requires targeted firing because if there's lings in among the Ultralisks, then the Immortals will focus on the lings if they're closer and not attack the Ultras at all, which is not what you want. So, I mean, it's tricky. It's tricky what Zest is trying to do here, and I respect it. And the Spore, spore Wall is coming up early here. Which is why the Tempest was given the Tectonic Destabilizers upgrade to deal with the buildings like Spores, especially Spores, though. Ultralisk in here amongst the Ling's gonna help? Yeah, there we go. That actually turned the tide quite nicely. Meanwhile, this cell is just in here killing drones willy-nilly. He dead now, but man, eight drones get killed. We're out still at 75, though. I think it's cool. So Viper's here to again abduct into the Corruptor Ball. We have Corruptors flying in. Good group of them. They are grouped up with the Vipers. They do have a symbiotic relationship. Which just means that the Corruptors are protecting the Vipers. And the Vipers are allowing the Corruptors to kill these carriers. Without getting in range of the Archons. Don't you know. Decent Baneling attack. I actually... Well, only one probe has died today. So not the best. Maybe a storm killed them all. Something happened here. Zealot's trying to get on up in this 12 o'clock base and win the day, but when you're outnumbered 4 to 1 by Ultralisks, it's not ideal. Turns out here. Ooh, good snipe on a Void Ray. And the Hydras are like, we can take out the carriers. Sort of. <laughs> if there isn't storm available, and there wasn't any storm available, but the carriers are turning into this critical number. God, plus three air weapons on the way from Zest. Chrono Boost is a good spell, man. Sterile's just barely getting plus two started. It's behind the plus three of the Protoss. Neural Parasite coming in. Infestor's on the way. We're going for, I think that's a uh, Warp Prism speed upgrade. Be my second guess, if not my first. It's only two options, though. Zealot's down, pushing, again, attacking into a Spore Forest when they're supporting Zerg Army there is probably the worst idea. You don't want to do it. We've got a replacement Oracle, though, for revelation purposes. That's pretty nice stuff. Zest just doing his dance, man. He is one of the more patient players you ever see, which, which is why, you know, when you see a game where he's super aggressive, it feels out of place because I've cast so many games of his where he's just content to sit back and make little tiny good trades over and over again. 
just over and over, keeping his army alive for the most part, and then when he's kind of bled his opponent dry, he goes for the jugular, but it can be, you know, 45 minutes to an hour before he really decides and needs to commit to something, you know? Yeah, observer speed's already done. Those are zippy boys. Get out of here. Get out of here, interceptors. This is probably an abduct scenario, and it is. We have enough corruptors to... Nope. Two shot. Two shot there. And some ultras just kind of wandering down here and taking out two immortals. Very nice. Very nice. Another immortal comes in. Oh, these are really expensive units. You'd just be kind of wandering on in here. Oh, wow. All right. So we're committing at this point. Zest goes ahead and takes down the 12 o'clock position. The ultras on the bottom side. Shield battery overcharge is a gosh darn good spell. Wow. Oh, oh, we're assimilating successful on some of these Archons down here. Storm's getting thrown down all over the place, though. Okay, the chaos is absolutely real right now. But is there enough here for Zest to continue pushing on through? It kind of feels like there is. Army supply is even, which isn't particularly great for the Zerg. Is there still, still an Ultra down here? But he dead now. He gone. Jeez, uh, these Ultras. There are four... Four, five, six, seven, eight immortals down here. Ultralisks just aren't going to cut it. So Broodlord's coming in, recognizing the Void Ray count is currently nothing for Zest. So that means Corruptors are going to be amazing. Broodlords are going to be a lot better, too. But good job wiping out a base, causing some uh, commotion everywhere. Aw, free infestors! And the immortal gets away because Broodlords are slow. And look at this, Zest taking another base. I'm telling you, oh, hang on, it gets away, but it stops running, and, ooh, 17 HP, and wanders into death. Was he, I think he was trying to free up that supply, to be honest with you. <laughs> it makes sense, right? Immortals aren't going to be very good, because all the ultras are dead now, so we got to trade those out effectively and get stuff done. And the stalker group, I don't know if they're necessarily here for suicide purposes, but, um, Okay. Duck, still not enough corruptors to one-shot a carrier, but to two-shot them is not shabby. One. Two. See? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Another abduct. This is looking really good for Serral all of a sudden. He's whittling down the carrier count quite nicely. It's another dead one, too. Zest. It's getting to the point where I'm worried because it feels like he's trading stuff out, but... It doesn't seem like a great idea to trade carriers out right now. Those are pretty good against Broodlords, it, turns, it just it turns out. Getting Flux Fanes and getting more Void Rays, but they're not going to be here in time to save this Nexus. Any Shield Batteries available? No. So the Nexus is dead. Deadzo and Dunzo, and now the Blink Stalkers are chasing in. They can one-shot the Broodlords. Blinding Cloud getting tossed to try to save them alive. Oh my gosh. The Blinding Cloud. The Stalkers are trapped between the Broodlings and the Archons. Chaos engages right now. The Broodlord, you can't really micro him super well, but Cyril's doing as well as he can here. Another Archon goes down. Storming the Broodlords to try to kill them before they get out of the range. They get off the, you know, abuse the fact that they can fly here. Army Supply 108 to 102. Slug Fest. An official Slug Fest here for you today. This has been absolutely insane. Flux Stains is complete. Resources lost. 26,000 for Serral. 29,000 for Zest. Hey, just instantly <laughs> wiped out Serral's third or natural, depending on how you want to look at it. Nice blink forward to take down a Broodlord, but now you're kind of stuck at the front lines where there are Broodlords... Chopping on you. Broodlings in particular chomping on you. I don't know. Zest hasn't really taken a new base in a while. I guess Serral has. In fact, that he's taken this one. And he has taken this one, too. That's the sound. That's the sound it makes. When carriers are flying around. Creep spread in up towards this fifth base of Zest. Yeah. Dude, these probes are all very dead. I mean, Zest... What? Why, Zest? Why would you be over here? I guess maybe he figures he can't defend it. 
Oh, you know what? A bunch of them survived because Serral's responding to this attack. All right, that worked out pretty well for Zest, I'm going to say. I'm not going to argue against it at all. Spines are just so bad at this stage of the game because they don't scale with upgrades. <laughs> and everything else upgrades that's attacking it. So, yeah, hatch down. This is... Oh, a single Ultralisk comes in to wipe out all the probes in the house. Nom, 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 nom. He's a hungry, hungry... He's got 26 kills, this Ultralisk does. That's a lot, man. I mean, sometimes the Protoss units have a ton of kills against Broodlords or Swarm Hosts. A lot of it is just like Broodlings and Locusts. But honestly... Pop! Surprise! <laughs> Surprise recall. If you're an Ultralisk with 26 kills against a Protoss opponent, I that's impressive. That's a lot of actual units dead for the Protoss. Protoss has lost more units to in total than Serral, which is not great for your long-term chances of winning this game. Neural Parasite. Bring it back over so we can kill it or use it for the engagement. Sure, why not? This carrier is still alive. Oh, Neural Parasite, wear it off. Wear it off. War off in time. I don't feel good about this for Zest. I really don't. He does have a nice group down here with some Stalkers. Couple Archons and an Immortal just kind of harassing the crap out of this base. Gonna kill all of these drones unless they don't have detection, which they don't. There are a lot of Observers, but none of them are down there. And by that, I mean there are two Observers. Not a great number. Yeah, man. Zest is backed into a corner right now. The Transfuses are real because the Queens are here, baby! Ah, oh, the Void Rays get wiped out, and once the Void Rays are gone, the carriers aren't really worth much. The Queens are fighting, getting stormed in the face. They're pretty tanky, but they will some come to storm immediately, or eventually, as all Zerg units do. 122 to 81 total supply. Serral has got less of a bank than Zest does, actually. Zest's bank is pretty fancy. That said, his production tab is empty, which I'm worried about for him. There you go. Five High Templar and eight Stalkers instantly warped in to bring him up to 157 supply, but Serral still has the bigger army. Serral is sharking around down this side of the map, really put Zest on the defensive here, and his production tab is sick. Look at all the stuff he's doing up there. Investors, Corruptors, Brew Lords, Overseers, new bases. Look at him burrowing an Ultralisk. That was worth a shot. Man, how often do we see burrowed Ultras? Not very often, I can say that for sure. And then... When Lings come in and murder your base, you just immediately warp in a million Zealots. You don't really have to defend bases if you have Warpins available. This is turning into a match. We're 22 minutes into this thing. I feel like Serral has the upper hand, but it's not over yet by any stretch. And if his income keeps getting whittled down like this, it's going to be a problem for the Zerg player. This base is really important to him right now. He's lost this one and this one. Of course, Zest hasn't really expanded in some time either and he is fully mined out of every base except for two and this one's just about done Ling's trying to see did you leave it undefended this time no cool super cool oh neural parasite on the archon to help against the zealots is such a sick move oh it forces a full recall back here and this Archon lives. He has to live with the guilt of having murdered how many of his zealot brethren. Not a good feeling. DT up here trying to get stuff done. Uh, not going to because there's an Overseer on the way. He dead. Meanwhile, Blinding Cloud, Broodlords, blinking in, Fungal over everything. I think Zest Army is just getting wiped out here. He doesn't have the army. He doesn't have the Void Rays. He doesn't have the Storm or the Blink Stalkers to deal with these Broodlords. This is his last source of income. It appears to be the last stand for Zest. And Serral. That's it, man. We're done. 181 to 117 supply. Look at the supply. As Todd would say, Zest is fighting to the better end here. But again, more carriers dying. The abducts have been sick today from Serral. I haven't seen that many feedbacks. Storm Drop takes down 16 drones. And again, the one source of income that remains largely but that's your good game and Serral is your winner in 24 minutes and 33 seconds oh <laughs> hit that like button if you enjoyed that match that was a ton of fun zest fought extremely hard but you can't win them all especially against someone whose name is Serral. it turns out
I, I did a study on this. You can't actually win every game versus Cyril. It's it's impossible. <laughs> Just like you can't win every game against Innovation or Trap or Zest or Clem or Rainer or Stats or Rogue or any of these guys, right? Right. Right, right. Anyway, yeah, it's not good when you've lost 8,000, almost 9,000 more resources than your Zerg opponent as Protoss. That's really, really bad news, Bears. But yeah, end of the game there. Didn't have much of an army at all. His bank had dwindled pretty efficiently. I mean, Serral didn't have much of a bank either. But he did have access to two bases. Uh, only had 27 workers, but at least he had bases to mine from, whereas Zest did not. He saw the writing on the wall. And yeah, Broodlords actually being the hammer for once in a game... Actually getting the job done. Cyril did such a good job getting rid of the Void Rays and the Stalkers. The Blinding Cloud was so good. It was so good today. The Abducts, the Blinding Clouds, the Fungals, the Neural Parasites. Tons of spellcasting from Cyril today. Is that same thing? Storms and Feedbacks. And um, other spellcasty things that his units did. Uh, uh, Reve Revelation got used today as well. So yeah, Spellcaster versus Spellcaster. And at the end of the day, uh, Cyril just came out on top. Good pressure, right? If you end up killing three Nexuses in 24 minutes, that's pretty good. He lost five hatches, but he did enough economic damage on the other side to make it worth it. And then, yeah, nine carriers went down. None left at the end of the game. Zest did not go heavy on the carriers because you recognize the abduct corruptor potential. But they did pretty well for him until they went down. 15 Archons died as well. 10 Ultralisks died. None left at the end of the game. Nine Queens, too, fell bravely defending against the Protoss Onslaught. Fun. All right, so that right there uh, is going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you have uh, if like what you saw and what you heard today. If you haven't already, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.